guys, my name is Pixie, and today we're going to create a binary converter, which will take user input, break it up into individual characters, and convert those characters to binary. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is an intermediate level tutorial and does require some basic knowledge of how computers work. I'll give a brief explanation of the conversion process and break it down into steps as best as I can. If you're having trouble following along, feel free to leave me a comment and I will gladly help where I can. If you download the file from the gallery, you'll notice there are four screens. The converter screen is the main screen for this video. However, I'm not going to go over how to create this layout. As always, the layout is not imperative to learning the blocks process, but I wanted to give you guys an example of how you can display this information using a clean interface. That said, the example layout screen contains the seven components you need for this tutorial. If you're following along exactly with the video, go ahead and make this temporary layout so you can see what we're doing. First, drag a text box and a button onto the viewer. Next, you'll need a vertical scroll arrangement, specifically because there's no limit to what the user can input, so we need to make sure that the user can view all of the correct output, which sometimes might exceed the window height. Next, you'll want a table arrangement with three columns and one row. Drop one label into each column in the table. As always, you can name your components whatever you'd like. The first step in using this app is for the user to enter some sort of text. So I call this text box UIN, which is short for user input. Step two requires that the user click a button in order to convert their input to binary. So I'll name this button get result. For the output, I want to display each individual character, each decimal value for the character, and the binary code for that character. This will be organized into a table view. We'll name the first column label character, the second column is label decimal, and the last column is label binary. Now remember that the design view of the converter screen is purely aesthetic, so don't let it confuse you. If you download the file from the gallery, the block section of this tutorial will be located on the converter screen. Before we begin, it's important to understand what we're doing. We have what is known as the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, also known as ASCII. If you visit ASCIITable.com, you'll notice that most of the characters on your keyboard can be broken up into decimal, hexadecimal, and octal values. We're going to focus just on the decimal values for our conversion to binary. So according to this chart, the decimal value for a capital A is 65, and the decimal value for a lowercase a is 97. If you understand how bytes and bits work, there's actually a really easy way to convert a decimal value to binary just by looking at that value. Each bit has a value assigned to it based on powers of two. So if we have a decimal value of 164, we can take a look at this table and say that 164 is greater than 128, so we place a one in this column. 164 minus 128 is 36, and the number 36 is greater than 32, but less than 64, so we place a one here. 36 minus 32 is four, so we place a one here, and we're done. The remaining columns become zero. Therefore, the binary representation of the decimal value 164 is 1010100. We convert from decimal to binary because we can perform mathematical operations on numbers. If we wanted to convert an uppercase A to binary, we can't say A is greater than 126 because that just isn't true. A is not a number, but an uppercase A on the ASCII table is represented by the decimal value 65. Using these decimal values will allow us to convert letters, numbers, and special characters characters to binary. If you're still confused, that's okay. We're going to go over this again in just a second. Let's start with eight global variables. We need five different lists. The first two lists, alphabet and special characters, will make up our ASCII table. We also need a list that breaks up the user input into individual characters. Next, we'll have a list that stores the decimal value for each individual character that the user entered. Then we need to store the binary string for each decimal value into the final list. We need a variable to reset the base to 128, which will help during the math conversion. And lastly, we need a temporary binary string and a string to hold user input. There are a lot of programming languages that have built-in ways to access the ASCII table, but unfortunately App Inventor cannot currently do that. So we need to recreate the ASCII table. Start by creating the initialized list procedure. Grab two add items to list blocks. The first will be our alphabet and the second will be special characters. The first list is pretty simple. For English, we need 26 items in the list and each item will be a letter of the alphabet. Remember that the ASCII table has different decimal values for letters, but App Inventor has a block that distinguishes between uppercase and lowercase letters. So we're just going to write the alphabet one time. The special characters box is a little different. Let's review the ASCII table. 
We're not going to include this first column because there are typically characters you cannot type into a text box, like backspace or tab, for example. So don't really worry too much about this first column. We're going to start at decimal number 32, which is space. To create a space, you simply use a text block and press the space bar. It will look blank, but just remember that there is an invisible space in this text block. Add each special character in order until you reach decimal number 48, which represents the number 0. We can work with numbers 0 through 9 easily. We don't need to make a separate list for that, so skip 0 through 9 and continue with decimal number 58, which represents the colon. Keep adding items until you reach the at symbol. We've already created the first list for A through Z, so we're going to skip that and add decimal numbers 91 through 96. Skip the lowercase letters and add decimal numbers 123 through 126. We're skipping the delete button because if the user deletes a character, clicking that delete button doesn't register. We just won't see the character. When the screen starts, we need to make sure to initialize these lists, and now we can start working on the conversion. When the user clicks on the text box, a keyboard will appear. The user will type whatever they want and hit the Get Result button. Sometimes the keyboard does not disappear automatically, so we're going to force hide the keyboard. If this is the very first time the user has entered something, then the result should be blank. However, the user can keep entering text, pressing the Get Result button to see a new conversion, so we need to make sure to hide any previous conversions. So as soon as we hide the keyboard, we're also going to quickly reset any input. Make a separate procedure called Reset Input. First, we're going to capture the user input within the global user input variable. Next, we need to reset a few global variables and labels. Set user input list, decimal list, and binary list to empty lists. The output labels will display the results, so we want to make sure to clear these for each new conversion. Next, create a local variable called user input length and set its value to the length of the user input. We're going to loop through the user input from the first character until the last character, and we're going to focus on each character one at a time. Inside this loop, we need three local variables called character, index, and decimal. App Inventor has a block called segment text, which as you can guess from the name, takes a portion or a segment from a string. So this variable changes every time during the loop. We start at the current index in the loop and we end at that character. The default value for index is kind of a placeholder. We need a way to define what this character actually is. Is it a number? Is it a letter? A special character? We don't know yet. The value for decimal will default to zero, but this will change based on the character type. Next, add an if-else statement that says, if the character is an uppercase letter, then look for the matching letter in the alphabet list. The actual index in the list will be stored in the index variable. According to the ASCII table, uppercase letters start at decimal value 65. We're storing these letters in a list which have a default index of one, so we need to offset our decimal value by minus one. So index 1 in the alphabet list is the same as ASCII decimal value number 65, which is an uppercase A. If the current character is a lowercase letter, then we basically do the same thing. We look for the matching letter in the alphabet list. The only difference is that we have to specify that we're looking for an uppercase letter in the alphabet list, since each item in that list is written in an uppercase letter. This is why we didn't need to create a separate list for lowercase letters. We can just add this extra block. According to the ASCII table, lowercase letters start at decimal value 97, but again, we need to offset by minus 1. If we had created a third condition for numbers, then App Inventor would treat all input as a string instead of letters and numbers, so we need a second if-else statement. This time we ask, is this character a number? If so, then the index is set to the value of character. Now remember we didn't create a list for numbers because we can simply set the decimal value to 48 for numbers and add 48 plus the number that the user entered. Notice that we're not offsetting by minus 1 because numbers start at 0. Finish off this statement by checking for special characters. So if the character is not an uppercase letter, not a lowercase letter, and not a number, then we say, well, is this character somewhere in the special characters list? If so, then we set the index local variable to the index of that special character in the list. If the user enters a space, then the index would be 1. If the user enters an exclamation point, then the index would be 2. Now remember when we created the special characters list that we grabbed characters from four different sections of the ASCII table. We're basically going to break this list into sections. So during this if-else statement, we need to figure out where we are in the list. If our index is greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 16, then we set the decimal value to 31. 
Otherwise, if the index is between 17 and 23, we set the decimal to 57. We also need to reset the index value to ignore the first 16 characters. We're basically focusing on that section of the list. We finish off this statement with sections 3 and 4. If the index is between 24 and 29, the decimal value becomes 90 and we reset the index to ignore the first 23 characters. The fourth section checks for an index between 30 and 33, sets the decimal to 122, and resets the index to ignore the first 29 characters. Now normally I wouldn't recommend hard coding data like this, but there's no actual pattern to these numbers. We just kind of had to make it up based on what we're trying to achieve. Remember that we're checking each character one at a time and we're still looping through the user input. We're going to capture each character and add it to the user input list. We're also going to capture each decimal value for that character and add it to the decimal list. The value that we put in this list is the decimal value plus the index value. Next, create three procedures called get characters, get decimals, and get binary. We can finish off this button click event by calling each of these procedures. In order to show each individual character, we need to loop through the user input list. Each character will be displayed in the output character label. Use the join block to keep everything that's currently written in this label, then add the current item in the list plus a manual line break. This will display the characters in column form. We'll display each decimal value the same way. Loop through the decimal list, use the output decimal label, and show the results in column form. We'll display the binary output the same way as characters and decimals. Loop through the binary list, use the output binary label, and show the results in column form but we haven't actually converted to binary yet. We need three more procedures and then we are done. The first procedure is set digit with an argument named n. The second procedure is new base value. And the final procedure is convert binary with an argument named value. The set digit procedure is pretty simple. We're gonna continuously add to the temporary binary string one digit at a time. It's basically just going to be ones and zeros. I call it a temporary string because we're going to write to the string and then dump it then rewrite it and then dump it for as many times as we need to. The second procedure will take our base value and divide it by two. This will allow us to move down the powers of two, much like the table setup you saw earlier in the video. At the start of the convert binary procedure, we're gonna set the global base value to 128. The reason why is because we're only looking at ASCII decimal values between 32 and 127. We use the number 128 because it's the highest power of two for the data that we're working with. To create the binary string, we need to simulate the process I showed you earlier by placing a one or a zero in each bit. So we need to loop eight times, one column at a time. Our first check is to see if the global base is greater than the value passed through the argument. If that value is greater, not equal to, then this column gets a zero. We call the new base value procedure to move to the next column. The last check says if the base is less than or equal to the value, then this column gets a one. Reset value to subtract the current base amount and set a new base value. Once the loop finishes, we have a binary string. We can add that string to the first index in the binary list. Then we reset to an empty string so we can keep reusing this temporary string. If there's no mistakes, then you should be able to run the app perfectly. Test it out by typing in uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. When you hit the get result button, you'll notice that your input has been broken down into individual characters as well as the ASCII decimal values associated with that character and the binary string for that character. Keep in mind that any character input that isn't on the ASCII table or has a decimal value less than 32 or greater than 127 will just show up as nonsense, or rather it'll be inaccurate. But obviously challenge yourself, keep working on this app and see what changes you can make. Maybe add a conversion for hexadecimal or octal values as well. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to thumbs up and have a great day, bye.